Nadia O oh is one of pop music's greatest mysteries. Originally a model, Nadia had a brief music career in the late 2000s and early 2010s before disappearing from the public eye altogether. Her first album, 2008's Hot Like Wow, was an electropop dance record produced primarily by Space Cowboy, who you may recognize from Lady Gaga's early works. Hot Like Wow feels like a dystopian version of 2008, where Lady Gaga brought a theatric vocal performance in her album. Nadia is the exact opposite. She's auto-tuned to the point of sounding like a robot, which was clearly intentional. I don't know if she's a great singer or not, but I think her voice does suit the songs really well. She sounds like a dead-eyed party girl who may have taken some illicit substances and is now chasing after boys and living it up in the club. There's something weirdly unsettling about it, like she's clearly having fun, but the layers of autotune are masking her deeper emotions. Alright, let me stop psychoanalyzing for a second and just say Hot Like Wow is a great dance album. Space Cowboy's glitchy, shimmery production, along with Nadia's monotone delivery, make it simultaneously stand out from other musical acts of this era, while also sounding just like them. Obviously, 2008 was a golden era for party music, but Hot Like Wow feels a bit more experimental than its contemporaries. Like I said before, it feels dystopian, almost like it's a parody of music from the time. It kind of reminds me of when a TV show will make up a fake pop star, and their songs have the most basic lyrics that you're clearly not meant to pay attention to. One of the songs literally is called Hot Mail, where the chorus is her saying, I've been checking for a hot mail over and over. Her deadpan delivery makes the song strangely hypnotic, and the hook is so simple but so catchy that it's impossible to not have it in your head after listening. Sadly enough, the song couldn't get people to still use Hotmail, should have called it Gmail instead. Hot Like Wow had about half of its 13 tracks released as singles, though none of them achieved much success. The song My Egyptian Lover was apparently used in Lady Gaga's early promo tours, with Gaga singing over the instrumental. This makes sense, as Space Cowboy played a huge role in Gaga's and Nadia's music. The crazy thing to me about My Egyptian Lover is that it was released in January of 2007, well before the club music boom. Its heavy auto-tune and synthy dance beat kind of predicted the sound that would become popular. Also, is this song problematic nowadays? I don't know, the production literally sounds like a club remix of the music from Aladdin, and one of the lyrics is, then you could take me on your magic carpet ride. Would she be cancelled for this? I don't know. All I know is the song is a bop. Another track that gained some exposure was Got Your Number, which was used in a season 1 episode of Gossip Girl. This was actually how I discovered Nadia. I heard the song in the show and I had to seek it out. Got Your Number is an infectious 80s sounding dance song with insanely catchy verses and a simple but memorable chorus. In another timeline, I see the song being a huge hit, and I wonder why it wasn't promoted even more beyond its feature on Gossip Girl. Hot Like Wow may not have been a huge album, but it certainly established the Nadia O character. The girl was here to dance, baby. Nothing deeper, no emotion, just a party girl with a British accent looking to have a good time. Nadia would continue to release music in 2009 with the songs Follow Me and Amsterdam both being released in September of that year. It would take about a year and a half until her next album, Colors, which was released in May 2011. The original release didn't include Follow Me, though it was included on the reissue in September 2011. Colors is even more experimental than Hot Like Wow, blending electropop, house, and moonbaton, which is a subgenre of EDM inspired by reggaeton. Nadia sounds even more digitized in colors. She straight up doesn't sound real at times. It really does sound like an AI generated dance pop album, and I don't mean that in a bad way. The intention was clearly to make Nadia sound like an untouchable, icy, emotionless dance queen, simply here to get people moving. Like her debut, there is some darkness underneath the heavy electronic beats that can make some of the songs weirdly unnerving. Specifically, the song Is That You? I don't know if it's just me, but that song kind of sounds like a low-key internal freakout put to music. I can't really explain it, it's just kind of unsettling, you have to hear it for yourself. Colors has a lot of memorable moments like this, 
with weird instrumentation, glitchy production, nonsensical lyrics, the song Taken Over the Dance Floor is especially ridiculous. With lyrics like Moombaton, Don Julio Patron, We Get It Popping Ton, Up in the Clubbing Ton, We We Cape Middleton, Swaggin Swagging Ton. Like, what in God's name did they take to come up with these lyrics? As funny as they sound, I actually think they work really well in the song. It feels so anthemic and weirdly triumphant when listening to it, mostly due to the music itself. The album feels like somebody put Lady Gaga's The Fame and Britney's Blackout through the laundry together, and they both came out slightly deformed. It's great dance music, but it is strange. What's crazy to me is this album kind of predicted the avant-garde hyperpop sound that would become popularized by the record label PC Music and artists like Charlie XCX. It sounds like something that would be popular among PC Music fans with its computerized robotic vocals and loud, often frantic production. I'm not really a big fan of PC music, but going off of what I've heard of it, Color sounds like it was a prototype for this sound. This was the second time Nadia was ahead of the curve in predicting the sound of pop music, or I guess in this case, a subgenre of pop music, but still, it's damn impressive. Unfortunately, Colors didn't really make much noise despite six singles being released. Weirdly enough, the song Rip It Up from her first album was released as a promo single in February 2012, four years after Hot Like Wow and well into the Colors era. God knows why that song was chosen. I mean, it's legit a minute and a half. What exactly were they hoping would happen with it? Anyways, in March 2012, Nadia released her final single called Slapper. And let me tell y'all, the title does not lie. It's my favorite Nadia O song, hands down. There's so many individual highlights stuffed into its two and a half minute runtime with quotable lyrics and production that keeps throwing in different musical elements that make the song interesting. It's one of those songs that, even if you find it annoying, you just can't stop listening to it because of how strange it is. The song is a dance pop track with hip hop and trap influences a full year before Katy Perry's Dark Horse would mix pop and trap music and make trap music explode in mainstream popularity. Nadia was chronically ahead of her time. And yes, I know trap music was around long before 2012, but pop artists didn't really incorporate that sound into their music until the mid-2010s, and Nadia once again predicted this trend. Slapper was the last song she released, and she's dropped off the radar completely since then. Her last Instagram post was in 2012, and her website is clearly stuck back there as well, as it's still promoting colors. Nadia O oh is one of the most perplexing artists I have ever come across. Here's this random model from England who dropped two albums that intentionally or not predicted musical trends that have become mainstream. She worked with Space Cowboy, another musical act who seemingly disappeared after having a huge effect on the music industry with his production for Lady Gaga. Why was Nadia's music not bigger? Did it have to do with her label not promoting it properly? Was there genuinely just no interest? Did Nadia enjoy making music? Was she planning on just having a couple of albums? Or did she want to have more success? And why is there so little information about her? Is she actually a robot? Was that just her natural singing voice and not auto-tune? Who knows? Nadia O oh is one of pop music's greatest mysteries to me, but the only thing that isn't questionable is that her music absolutely slaps. We may not know anything about her, but hey, at least she gave us some great songs.